Hi everybody, welcome to the last watch along video for October. As you already saw with that nice little photo there, it's all about Halloween this week. And I'm starting my page off with some book pages and artist gel to glue it down. It's a mixture of um, Mod Podge or a clear gesso, so it uh, does not only glue the pages the book pages to my art journal page, but it also would seal it in would I put it on top of the book pages, which I'm not going to do this week because I want the uh, book pages to be porous. So while I do, let, do that, let me tell you why I use book pages this week and there's actually a reason for it. I'm not celebrating Halloween in my country which is Germany, if you know me for a while now. Um, you might have already been aware of that. In Germany, we don't really celebrate um, Halloween. It's a typical, traditional American holiday, and that's totally cool, but we don't celebrate it here. Uh, well, it, maybe the younger generation gets into it, like ad adapting Halloween to one of their own holidays, but it's not a public holiday and it's not that big in Germany. However, I really, really like the Halloween stories and movies that are out there in the world. So um, me having a couple of favorite Halloween stories, uh, I reread them or rewatch the movies every year when it's end of October. And that's my love for Halloween. So uh, one of them, for example, being the movie Hocus Pocus from Disney with Bette Midler and, uh, oh, what was her name? The girl that played in, in uh, Sex and the City. Um, you know whom I mean. So they played the Bad Witches in a Disney movie and I really like that Halloween movie. So I'm going to watch that this week. Um, to go on with the art stuff, I'm using pastel chalks to create a background. And I'm going for orange, purple and blue because these are the Halloween colors for me. <laughs> they, it's, uh, it's almost like a huge sun, a sunset that I'm going to create there, but also orange is the color of Hokkaido, which is a pumpkin. And uh, that also, the jack-o'-lantern pumpkin, by the way, is Hokkaido. And um, I really like pumpkin. I love to cook it, I love to look at it, I love to paint it. So all of those oranges do serve both purposes. The sunset for one, going into the dark uh, season, which is winter, and the pumpkin. <laughs> so I'm uh, creating kind of an, an ellipse or an oval shape. It's not really a circle that I'm doing with this orange, but I try to be as circular as I might be on a rectangular page. The purple I put in there to blend the orange into what could be the night sky around the sunset or just um well just some witchy things purple is also associated with witches or with magic at all so uh putting purple on the background of the page definitely goes into the theme of witchy things that might happen on halloween or the night before actually and um, well the magical things that uh, happen in the stories around Halloween so I'm also adding in but that's only in a couple of minutes I'm also adding in a bit of indigo blue it's a very reddish blue which uh, works perfectly with this radish purple here. I didn't use the cool color, I used the warmer uh, tone of purple. So the indigo will, um, well, 
make a perfect shadow to it or a perfect blending to the real night sky on the upper part of the page. But before I go to the indigo, I'm using a bit more of a cadmium yellow here to brighten up the circle in the middle a bit because I'm planning to have a big black cat in front of the sun. I'd say it's the sun. So um, to have a nice contrast, I brightened up that center of the orangey circle there. So now I'm, you see I'm going for the indigo, blending it, and it works nicely with the purple, I have to say. It really uh, blends well. It is nice to the eye. It feels, well, kind of natural. And also the indigo is a complementary color to the orangey parts in the middle, so it's just very pleasing to the eye if you combine those two color tones. And you see why I didn't seal in the page? Because with the pastel chalks I need to, well, have them seep into the book pages. If that would not have been a porous surface, uh, the blending would have been easier, yes, but the natural feel of pastel chalks wouldn't have been on the page and it would have looked almost like crayons, I'd say, and not so much as pastel chalks. So now that I'm done and I've cleaned <laughs> at least partially, my fingers and throwing my can of fixative spray onto the page uh, because I'm clumsy and because I can. Um, and I'm just spraying that page to seal in the chalk and I'm using quite a bit of fixative spray here to make sure that I don't, um, well, have any pastel chalks later that would maybe clog my acrylics or my permanent markers. So Unpatient Me uses a blow dryer again to dry off that fixative spray as quickly as possible because I want to go on painting. So while the page was wet you could hardly see the book text coming through but now that everything dries off the um, printed ink seeps through and is way more visible which I like a lot because again I want the book pages to be visible I want to have that component of my love for Halloween stories visible on that particular page So now that everything is dry, I let it cool for a tiny bit and then I'm taking my pencil and I'm sketching a mischievous cat. And I think um, it's a girl. It's a girl cat. <laughs> I did, for whatever reason, think that once I had her on the page and I guess once she's finished you can see why I think it's a girl. And she's a mischievous cat. She's representing the witchy parts or the magical parts of all the Halloween stories that are out there. And I'm just going for a very cartoony look. I'm not even attempting to draw a real cat because I would do that in a way different way and a way different angle. And maybe someday I'm going to... Um, make a real or a realistic animal drawing in my art journal page, but not for now. I think Halloween, with all its magical and supernatural stories that um, are around the, the holiday, I think a cartoony or a mischievous cat is, is way more suited. I don't need realism on a day that is so much about otherworldly stuff and um, magical stories and mysteries. So um, I'm just 
drawing the outlines they are trying to um well have her um as well proportioned as I might draw her with with um the pencil but I also try to make sure that I overdo certain things like the back of the of the cat being really round and the legs being maybe a bit too long and a bit too sharply angled but she's like on the jump she's aware so she's like meow <laughs> standing like that you, you know what I mean <laughs> <laughs> you should probably see my face when I re record this overview, uh, over uh, voiceover. I'm, <laughs> I'm sitting at my desk, having the hands like in cat claws and making funny faces, trying to, well, tell you what I actually mean, and only being aware, like half a second later, that you actually can see what <laughs> kind of gestures I'm doing here. So. Forgive me. <laughs> this is hilarious. <laughs> so, um, now that I'm done with the overall sketch of my kitty cat, I'm using acrylics lamp black because uh, this is my favorite black. It's very opaque and it is not as dull once it is dried as other blacks might be it still has a shimmer to it and I like that so I'm just filling in the whole kitty cat uh, with that lamp black having a solid layer and I'm using an angled brush for that because it actually helps me um, with the outlines a lot you can get very sharp edges but you can also uh, fill in quite a bit with this size of the brush if um, you're working more on the middle parts of the caddy. The caddy caddy. <clears throat> so now that the head is done, I'm moving on to the body. And I'm, I don't use uh, any water or I didn't wet my brush before I dipped it into the paint because I still want to make sure that I'm not taking off any of the fixative spray or the pastel chalk so I'm going as dry as possible to not have any water reaction or whatever might happen with the pastels and the acrylics And Kitty is coming together. I really like this page, how it turns out in the end. I have to take that away already. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, not even halfway through the painting, and I'm already saying that I like it. But uh, I really, really like the page once it was finished because it looked so happy and light. After uh, the last two weeks being more on a heavy topic, with uh, my art journal pages, I think this particular page having a very happy and light topic and also, well, a lighter technique was just very enjoyable to me and uh, almost like a vacation, if you know what I mean. That, that kind of feeling that you just can relax. That's uh, something that I liked a lot while I put that page together and I enjoyed it very very much also using all of those happy colors and um, very straight line work like very clean line work I really really loved to do that this week it's, it's almost like more of an illustration or cartoony style which I haven't done in quite a bit in my art journal so uh, this was like a treat for me. There was no trick, just treat. <laughs> so I'm just now filling in the last leg of the kitty. 
And I know she's she uh, the, the legs and the feet are quite at a weird angle. Again, she's to me she looks like she's um, ready to jump somewhere. So I'm fine with the angles. And she's also maybe hissing. That's why the back is so round. And she's like Meh, pushing something or somebody away. Uh, or, or trying to scare somebody off. But the angle will of, of the feet will um, be covered up with a bit of grass or um, I don't know shrubbery uh, later on on the but uh, on the bottom of the page so the weird angle won't be as significant or as visible as it is now so with the with the tail I'm going from thicker to thinner because way later I'm going to start of the sentiment at that tail so I um, had to make sure that the tip of the tail was quite thin so that I could um, have a nice blending thing going on when it comes to the writing later. With one of my oldest brushes that is like almost well, ruined with the bristles. Uh, I'm drawing in some grass or shrubbery, whatever you want to call it. And I'm just dabbing on some black there and letting the stiff bristles of the brush do the rest. I'm not forcing anything. There's no special technique. It's just a goddamn old brush that I'm using there that does everything for me to uh, create grass and I just have to slap on the color. So, impatient me, again, dries everything off with a blow dryer because I want to go on as quickly as possible. And though these acrylics dry pretty fast and it's quite warm in my studio, I already have the heating on so the color sets fast, uh, I still need to go over it with blow dryer to make sure that there are no wet blobs. So I'm taking another book page and I do have these plastic rulers that have different kinds of stencils in there that you could use and I'm using one of those shapes to make the cat's eyes and like very many other artists I do have a problem with well drawing uh, eyes like to be identical there one always looks a tiny bit different than the other and I didn't want to bother with it so I'm using one of those stencils here to, um, well, make things faster. It's just a lovely tool. So I'm using this, it's actually a leaf or something, but I'm using this form for my cat eyes. And you see that I draw two of them the same way, but uh, in a few minutes I'm going to, and I'm currently drawing in, I'm freely handing the nose, but you see that I'm, in a couple of minutes, I will draw another one of those eyes because I didn't realize that I had to flip one over to, well, paint, or have the, have the eyes look identical later. It's like, yeah, dumb me. But for now, <laughs> let's not get ahead of myself. I'm coloring in the eyes with Copic markers and I'm using a uh, yellow, uh, light green, and a dark green. And I'm just blending these three colors together to make the cat eyes, where the yellow is the most prominent color. I'm just using the light green and the dark green as kind of um, shadows or highlights, pretty much. And I'm really just going for the yellow cat eyes. So, see, now I'm realizing, ah, I gotta flip the eye because right is not left and left is not right. So I'm just drawing another one of those shapes and to make sure that I don't color the wrong one, I'm axing the one I'm not using out. And this is the dark green I was talking about I'd use and I'm just going around the eye and then I'm blending uh, the color into the light green and the yellow. And since this 
paper sucks in quite a bit of color and it almost bleeds into the page. Um, I have to make sure that I do have that yellow and light green layer laid down before I use the dark green, otherwise it would look weird. It would bleed into the part of the eye and I couldn't use that. So I can prevent that bleeding by filling in the eye with yellow and light green first to, well, have it saturated a bit, I'd say. And I'm just doing the same thing to the second eye, again, having the yellow go first, having a strip of the light green and blending it. And I'm always using the brush tip because I, I well, I get the best results with it. The other part is also fine, but I'm not um, coloring that huge areas with the Copic markers, so I'm, I use usually use the tinier brush tip. And now the last part of blending is going on. And don't worry that uh, the dark green looks way bigger on the left eye than on the right eye. I'm going to cut them out anyways so I can trim off that bit. Uh, for the nose I decided to go with purple because it's just pretty with the yellow and the green and also there's purple in the background so it just fits in nicely. I'm just going with two tones, a lighter one, a darker one and I colored the right hand side of the nose a bit darker, blended those in because uh, the shadow is going to come from the upper left hand side of, uh, no the light is going to come from the upper left hand side of the painting. So there would be shadow on the uh, right hand side of the nosy and I'm just going around all of these three pieces with a tiny permanent marker and I'm going to draw in the pupils for the kitty and I'm coloring it in with black copying marker. I did do the outlines with a permanent marker though to also again prevent bleeding the black uh, of the copying marker into the yellow. Somehow that permanent marker stops it. So I like to outline that. I really like that uh, kind of blending that the copying markers do once they are drying off. When you paint it it doesn't look as well blended, but when they're dry, both of those colors, especially the yellow and the light green, they just blend together nicely and I really, really like the outcome. So I'm just cutting um, the eyes and the nose from that uh, book page. And of course I'm doing it halfway off frame because why would you interest, be interested in my cutting skills, hmm? <laughs> Yeah, again, I, I gotta learn it to sometimes maybe cut in frame. It would help a lot. But anyways, I number one is done. And if you just look at them on that book page, they somehow remind me of the Egyptian eyes, like Cleopatra or whatever. They're not, they don't even look, or maybe like a snake eye, but not, they don't even look like a cat eye to me. It's totally weird. But I guess it's just the form of the pupil and the um, bright yellow color. If it would be human eyes, it would be from the Egyptian area uh, era of drawing <laughs> i'd say but then again hey segue um isis was supposed to be a cat back then in the olden days so well maybe maybe the reincarnated pharaoh queen whatever isis from back in the Egyptian days is now on my page at Halloween. Who knows? Mysterious things can happen <laughs> on Halloween. 
So again, back to the painting now. Um, I'm done with cutting all of the uh, pieces. And now I'm getting back. Uh, first of all, I'm of course cleaning up my desk because I need some space to bring my book back into frame. So once I put all of my markers back, I'm bringing back the book. Be faster, Sarah. Yay. <laughs> my table is wobbly. So here's the kitty. And uh, now I'm going to arrange the eyes a bit better because this is not how I want them to be. I want them to be more angled to have her look really mischievous and um, yeah, like don't mess with me. I'm the cat of Halloween. I'm the witch's cat or whatever. <laughs> So I'm using normal crafting glue here, nothing fancy, because it's just paper and um, it's not the heaviest kind of material that I'm trying to put down. But uh, I'm using my tweezers uh, to hold on to the eyes and the nose, just to help me position everything and not have glue all over my fingers. And there is eye number one. And what I did not realize when I drew those eyes, but which I, what I like now that it is put down, the text of the eye actually matches the text of the background. Like it almost looks like um, I didn't, I'm, at least for the left eye, I'd say, um, it looks like I did paint around the eye and not put it on top, which is a nice little detail that was not intended. Um, but it so happened and I really like it. However, I wish I would have done it with the right eye as well. But again, I just realized it way later. So maybe next time. Just putting down Kitty's tiny nose there. And then I'm going to leave it for a bit to let it dry. And now that we're back, I'm starting with the sentiment. Like I said, from the tail, I was planning to uh, start the lettering as if it hangs or is an extension of the tail. So I'm going for the H, which helps a lot with the, with the tail having happy starting with an H. It's just the form works so well. I'm using the brush tip again on my Copic markers because it's very nice uh, with the thick and uh, thinner parts of layering. It just comes quite naturally and I like it. So there's the happy. You can't really see the lower loop of the, um, of the Y, but uh, later on I'm going to use some white permanent marker and then you can see all of the letters to the fullest. And now it's time to go for the Halloween. I'm not having the greatest handwriting, but uh, with the copy markers, I think I can manage to have... Well, it, it, it looked nice. At least it, it doesn't look as crooked as it does with other markers that have a ball pen tip or something. So there we are. Uh, now I'm going in with my white permanent marker, as I said, I'm adding details, reflection on the cat eyes and uh, on the nose, just a tiny bit. Also going in for the hair of the kitty. And an odd number is always better for that than an even number, so I'm going with three hairs there. <laughs> now she looks grumpy. Now she looks even more grumpy, but I'm going to um, enlarge the mouth of the kid later, so it almost looks as if she's smiling. And now I'm just going into, well, 
outline slash define the legs a bit more and um, well just giving Mrs. Kitty a shape and I, since she's a mischievous cat and I think she has something to do with magic uh, I'm going to give her a wriglet tail <laughs> maybe uh, she yeah I think it makes her look more mysterious, mythical, witchy, magical. You pick it. Whatever you 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 think it does to her character, I think it makes her look way cooler. And just yeah, yeah, mischievous. I think that's that's the word that describes her character the best with that and now you see what I mean especially now with the white outlines and the grass or shrubbery below the legs the the angles are not as weird anymore of her legs because they just end in the grass and you, it's way more believable that she is ready to jump or she's like Hey, what are you looking at me for? Go away. It's like, I'm going to my Halloween party. Don't bother. So, that's... She, she, <laughs> she has quite the character for me. <laughs> um, and again, as I already mentioned earlier, I'm going over the word happy with the white permanent marker. And now you can see the full second P and the Y so now you can actually read the word happy there and a bit of the cat ears just tiny hairs on top of her eyes the sensory hairs that caddies have also gives her a bit more character I think and now I'm going to make her smile and friendly or like um, sassy <laughs> in a way and I'm just putting down the date at the end and then that's pretty much that thank you so much for watching I hope you enjoyed enjoyed this lovely happy Halloween page uh, if you have any questions please let me know otherwise I would love to see you next week with a new design and um, thanks so much for watching